Hello folks, I'm Scott Grove. Today we're going to learn how to play funk guitar. We're going to concentrate on rhythms and some lead things. I'm going to tell you what you're going to need as far as equipment goes. Uh, just a very little, couple little pointers actually on uh, what you might want to use as far as equipment goes. But anyway, we're going to cover all the rhythms, all, a whole bunch of the lead stuff also, uh, some picking style techniques, and um, incorporate all this stuff together. Now funk is not all that different from, God forbid, disco. I know. <laughs> funk was first. So anyway, that's where we're going now, is how to play funk guitar. Uh, we will be doing very easy things from playing with our fingers, kind of like a bass player would. I'll show you how to do this, which incorporates... <laughs> type of thing. Okay, we're also going to be doing, I have to lick my finger so my pick won't fly away, be doing the typical um, funk type rhythms which are like this. So we'll be getting through all that kind of stuff. We'll also be doing some funk lead stuff. Now I'm going to incorporate my keyboard real quick. It'll give me a drum machine and a backing track. And I'll throw in a little bit of wah-wah pedal and show you how all this stuff pulls together. And also at the same time I'll show you the same kind of lead stuff that you will learn in this one hour lesson. There's my drummer. He's never out of time. I love him. He's always on time too. Okay, here comes the rest of the band. Got the wall off pedal kicked in. Here we go, folks. stuff we'll be doing of course we'll be playing in more than just the key of E. But anyway that's the same kind of stuff you're gonna be learning. You'll be learning everything I showed you plus even more. So anyway sit back, have fun. We're gonna go through this a uh, little bit by little bit and get all the way through this. How to become a good just solid funk guitar player. Anyway my name once again I'm Scott Grove. You guys sit back, have fun and here we go. Alrighty kitties, this is all you're going to see of me for the next hour. Anyway, uh, as promised before, um, real quickly, uh, as far as funk guitar goes, basically most people will use like a uh, Stratocaster or something like that. Something where you can actually have three single coil pickups um, and they will use the uh, sound of two of them put together. So you get kind of that funky sound. <laughs> They go for that super clean sound. So anyway, humbuckers basically do not, not do not lend themselves to funk music very well. But anyway, that's just a preference and about probably 70% of people's uh, preference out there for a good clean sound. Um, the funk players basically don't use much in the way of effects other than, like I said, like maybe a wah-wah pedal. <laughs> if you're not familiar with what one is, you can go out and get one. It's just a pedal, kind of looks like... Um, a volume pedal, a gas pedal. It's just one of these things that you'll be stepping on. And as you step on it, you can get them for anywhere from 20 bucks all the way up to as much as you want to spend. Um, generally, I stick with the Morleys. There are the Crybabies, which are most people's preferences. Um, to show you kind of what it does, uh, I've got it kicked all the way back like you are not giving a car the gas. And I'm just pressing it down. The reason it's called a wah-wah pedal, if you don't know, 
Check this out. It kind of sounds like it's saying exactly that. Wah, wah. Okay, so for every note you do, you can push down on that pedal. If you want to watch me play it, I'll actually bring it all the way down here and you can watch what's going on. Okay, so I'm actually going to get the guitar in the picture for you. So. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> Sorry for all the rattle in here. But anyway, we've got, um, that's going to be your basically your only effect. A lot of um, funk players will also use a compressor, which uh, most people don't know how to use, but that is what is actually, it's what's called squishing, squashing my tone here a little bit. And a lot of people love that. I'm trying to get the camera to adjust it just a little more the way I like it. And that should do it for us. Um, anyway, the compressor adds just that. Adds a lot of sustain and that sort of thing. So um, go out maybe get yourself a compressor. If you do get one and you don't want a lot of noise, get like a uh, one that's mainly used for a PA system, like a DBX or an Alesis. Your local music store will be able to help you with it and show you how to use it. Okay, on with how to play funk guitar. Okay, here we go. We're actually going to start in the key of E, just like I did on the um, beginning of this video. Now, we're going to start without a pick. So you do with whatever you want to with your pick. Okay, I am going to use my thumb on the low E string and just pull up on it. I'm actually doing this. Okay, and with your first finger, you're going to be grabbing the D string, pulling up on it. Okay, so I'm actually pulling up and slapping it, just letting it slap against the guitar. Now I'll show you exactly what I'm doing there. With my fingers, okay, my thumb, I'm doing the low E, then I'm doing an open D string, okay, so then I'm doing second fret on the D string, okay, That's what I'm doing next. So I'm doing the thumb on the A string. Then I'm hammering on. I'm not picking anymore. Just hammering on to the second fret of the A string. And the same thing on the D string. So I'm only picking each one one time with my right hand. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Again, so you can see it at speed here. Any way you want to do that, just to make it sound and beat. You can double up on that. Boom. Do that twice. And then throw that other part in really quick. So you end up with this. Slowly, that would be this. Okay, 
If you're doing it that quick, the very last one is that. Thumb, hammer on, on the A string, and just flatten out your finger to grab that second fret at the E string. So it's... Which is a very cool sound. Instead of... And you can use it any way, it's up to you. Okay? So that's what we're going to be using here first. I'm going to give you the rhythm. Okay? Here's our rhythm. Okay? I'm going to do it just the way I did there at the very end. Here we go. Okay, that's what we're going to go for. Right now, I'm actually going to slow this thing way down and let you play it along. Okay, play with me, I'm going to count you in. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm going to want you to do it by yourself. I'm going to count you in. One, two, three, four, boom, bum, bum, dum, da, 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 You should be here. Okay, good job. Now what we're going to do is remind you that we can always speed this thing up and slow this thing down. Okay? Meaning, you here on the uh, video. You can always just go back, pause it, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to go back, get everything. I'm going to zoom through it. That's the beauty of uh, technology today. You can uh, fast forward, blah, 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 blah. Rewind, whatever you got to do. Okay, on to our next thing. What we're going to use now is um, what are called ninth chords. I will go back and do something else with what we just did a little, in a little bit. But right now we're going to go to the next part of all this E stuff. We're going to stay in E for about a half an hour. Then we're going to get off that and show you how to put all this together. Okay, you know how to play probably a regular E chord. You probably know how to play an E bar chord way up here. Okay, what most of you probably don't know, unless you're a blues player, is how to play a ninth chord. Okay, here's an E9. Is how it sounds. How is it played? Here we go, plain and simple. A string up to the seventh fret with your middle finger. On your D string, sixth fret. Okay? With your first finger. Now here's where we get funky. Uh, no pun intended. We are going to cover the G, B, and E string with our ring finger. Okay, so you're actually going to get all three of those strings covered with your ring finger. So you're actually going to end up with these five notes. Okay, so do whatever it takes to make that happen. If you have to pause this right now and take it a half hour to figure out how to do this, you got to make every single note happen. You can't have some kind of weird... John Catman, take the time, pause, work this out. Every every note, all five notes. Because what we're going to be doing with this is the most important thing you are ever going to do, period. Okay, as a funk player. Because what we're going to do with this, okay, we know it is an E because we're going to be basing this chord for the rest of our lives on whatever this A string is. So on the A string, you're going A, B, C, D, E. So we're building it off of that E. So whatever note your middle finger is on on that A string, 
that's what chord you're playing, but it's going to be a ninth chord, A9, or E9, I'm sorry. If you played it down here at D, that's D9, C9, B9. Okay, so F9, G9, A9, but we're worried about E9. Now the thing we're going to be doing is taking this whole thing and moving it back so that your middle finger will be on the 6th fret. We're going to play the whole chord and slide it up to the 7th fret to where it's supposed to be. So we're going to go like E flat 9 and move everything all at one time. Only hitting it one time with our guitar pick. We do have our guitar pick back. That's what we're looking for. So you've heard this a million times with a wah, wah wah pedal. This thing sounds so cool. Okay. Okay, that porno sound. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. That. That's you just holding the strings, doing nothing, but playing with the wah wah pedal. That's just you doing. No notes at all, just picking up your fingers and doing nothing but muting the strings and playing with your wobble pedal. Well, that's how all the uh, porno things in the 70s shows were made, as far as the music goes. Yes, that was always a guitar making that sound. Anyway. So that's what we're doing with our ninth chords. So really, really, really work on this. Um, with our right hand, what we are doing. Is always up and down. Okay, so I'm going to get really close in this way and try to get a shot of the pick. And what I'm doing down here with this hand, you'll hear, here. I'm getting what are called ghost notes, or just these little clicky sounds. Okay, you're actually just letting up on the strings. Just getting that click, click sound. But your pick is constantly going up and down. It never stops. So... That's the um, sound you want that there's actually the picking pattern. So pay very close attention to this. Play along with me. Here we go. One, two, three, Four. Again, rewind if you need to. We're going to keep moving on so we can get as much information as we can. Another thing I did earlier was instead of going backward, like this was going forward. That's also cool too. You'll hear in um, Cheryl Crow doing all I want to do is have some fun. Um, So it's a matter of whatever you want to do. You're the artist, you figure it out. But always come back to where you're supposed to be. Okay, so that's how we do those cool sounds. The other things that we have to learn how to play, these are the uh, four typical things you have to have. Okay, there's four things you have to have. Everything else is just icing on the cake. The next thing we can incorporate here, first of all we had our... Now. 
You can break that up, make it your own. Do not take everything at face value here. Uh, be creative, you're the artist, be creative. If I say do this, and that's what they go. Go haywire, you know, that's what you're here for. You're the artist. Um, I'm just giving you the tools to work with. Uh, you got to create the painting here. Okay, the third element in the key of E still is just simply octaves. What we are going to do is go to the G string all the way up here to the ninth fret with your first finger. That is the E, same as your E string. Okay, but we need an octave higher, so we're going to use our pinky at the twelfth fret on the high E string. Okay, now what you want to do is use the underside of this finger, your first finger, to mute that B string so that no sound comes out of it. Okay, so you actually want your finger to be pressing down here on the ninth fret on the G string, but you want the fat underneath your finger, so you get, instead of curving it over like you're used to, lay it down a little bit so that the fat of your finger actually mutes the B string. So there's nothing coming out. So when you actually play all three of those strings, all you're getting is the two E notes. And the, you're just hearing the click on the B string. And that is our third element. And we're doing the same thing with our hand as we were before. Now we're just so your right hand is exactly what you were doing before. No difference whatsoever. Just um, the thing that is different is the fact that we're just doing this now, and um, that's it. You are still lifting them up to create a muting sound. doing a little thing, you know, but most people will just stay. You can add it in. And however you want to. But it's exactly like what we were doing with that E9, but you're just doing this. But remember that B note has to be silent. And the I would use the uh, meat part of your hand here, your palm, on your right hand to actually set on the strings back here like by the bridge somewhere so that you're actually muting these lower strings in case you would accidentally hit them so because I'm actually hitting like four or five strings here but you're only hearing two and that's the reason see here I'll hit all six but you're only hearing some clicks and then those two strings. That's because I have the meat right here of that hand is resting back here by the bridge on, you know, like your low A, I mean your low E, your A, your D string. I'm kind of resting it all there and then letting the other ones ring through. And then if, again, the meat on that one finger is covering the B string barely, but just enough to shut it up. Okay, now I promised you that after we get into the half hour point, which is about five and a half minutes from now, that we would get out of the key of E. So we have to have five minutes here to learn the fourth and final element in basic funk, as far as the rhythm part goes. Then we're going to show you how to get this out of the key of E and put it some other places for a couple minutes. Then I'll get it you into some lead stuff. Okay, the fourth element we have to have. Okay, you know how to play a D chord. Okay. Take that D chord, move it up to two frets. Okay, now you know you have an E chord, right? Okay, now if you're playing D, and you made it D7, like that, most of you know how to do that. If not, you just take the D note, take it back two frets. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing if it's up here in E. E7. So what we're doing is taking this whole chord 
and moving it an octave higher. You can still keep it right down here, which is totally valid, and please, by all means, use this one here, okay? But we're going to take it all the way up here. So you have your middle finger on the 16th fret on the G string, your first finger on the 15th fret on the B string, and your ring finger on the 16th fret of the high E string. That's an E seventh. We're going to do the same picking thing again. We're going to do it exactly like the... We're going to just do it same thing here. We're even going to do the half step, moving it up in the exact same way. Nothing changes here. So the last three things are identical as far as your right hand go and a lot of your left except for what chord you're playing or what version or inversion of the chord you're playing. So there is no difference. That's just your other chord. So again, you can do it down here at four, three, and four. Or you can move it up an octave. Okay, so now I'm gonna summarize all this up. You have originally Change that around. Do something with it. You just change that thing up to have fun. But the whole trick behind that is playing without a pick. A pick just sounds weird. So get used to playing with this. That, my friends, is funky. Okay? The rest of it is exactly the same as uh, what I was showing you. This. Then this. Then this. Okay, so now it's just a matter of how do I use this? Okay? I'm going to use nothing but those things right now. Okay? I'm not going to use any effects. No wall up pedal yet, nothing. Just only what we've learned. Here we go. Watch me. using nothing but what I just showed you. Okay, now we're going to get out of the key of E. So that is basically the majority of how the rhythm and everything is going to work on this. In the key of A, you would do the same thing. Luckily, you've got to do the same thing. Okay, so you know, of course, in A, you can do it that way. If you're in B, though, Okay, it's the same thing. So you would actually be on the B, so second fret on the A string. Um, your thumb fingers are going to be doing exactly what they were before. Okay, so you're doing second fret on the A string, second fret on the G string, fourth fret on the G string. That is a hammer on from the second to the fourth fret on the D string and then flattening out to the fourth fret on the G string okay again you're popping every single note now the 
first angle. Okay, you'll use that in whatever key you're in, is that one right there. If you're in G, start on G on your low string. Nothing has changed whatsoever, just the key you're in. If you're in D, you start it there. Okay, and here's where we get fun. I'm going to show you this later. I wish I could fit everything in the screen. Um, maybe there I can. I don't have split screen. I'm not that uh, rich yet. <laughs> Um, one lick I show on a lot of tapes, but you need this one. Okay, say so we're in D. Okay, so from that D on the G string, where we're at on the seventh fret, you're gonna pull off from the seventh fret to the fifth fret. Okay, that's a pull off. Fourth fret on the D. Or, I'm sorry, seventh fret on the D string. So we got. So we're using our finger on the D, on the G string for the pull off, and thumb on the D string at the seventh fret. Then our finger on the fifth fret of the G string. Then we're using our finger on the D string. Or yeah. So it's a slide from the seventh to the fifth, and a pull off. To the third fret, all in one motion. I'm only hitting it one time with my finger. Then you're gonna take that thumb and grab that D note on the A string and pull it up and slap it. That's the whole lick. So you're doing this. That's how it's done. Okay, now you get to pause and go sit there and work on that for about a half hour till you make that happen. Okay, what happens if we're in the key of D? The song's playing. You got this going on. Okay, you're doing that. Same thing you've been doing before, now we're in D. We're doing a D ninth chord. We were doing the E9. We're doing it in D9 now. Okay, we're just doing it in D. And I'm just making up a different pattern with my right hand. Okay? So, that's what I'm making it sound like. It's all up and down until you stop. So I want you to make it sound like that. I'll play it a few times, you play it with me. Okay, it'll be easier with a drum machine. One, two, three, four. Okay, now go back and work with that part. Get it good, because now we're skipping right ahead, and I'm going to add two extra notes for you for the exact same thing we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna add these two notes. We're gonna bring it up one, and then up to the E9, okay? But we're still in the key of D, okay? So actually what I'm gonna have is this for you. One, two, three, four. We 
essentially just basically that. You're just embellishing. You're adding things in. I just want you to know that you are allowed to go there, but you have to come back to where you were. So you are allowed to go one behind, but you have to get back to your root, or your D in this case. The key the song is in is your root. And then you're allowed to go as high as two frets up, or one whole step. But then you have to get back home to your root again. So that is the rule. You can go one behind, but then get back there. You can go one up and get back there, or you can go two up and get back there, or you can go one up, one up, and then get back there, but you can't go anymore. That's basically the rule. Okay? So, again, sit there and play around with that. Go back to where I have nothing but this going on. As a matter of fact, I'll just let it run for a couple seconds. Okay, now that will be your point of practice from here on out. So remember where that was. That was about 37, 36, 35 minutes into the tape. But you'll be able to find... <laughs> yeah, this isn't a tape anymore. It's DVD, CDs, whatever you have. Anyway, <laughs> you can tell how old I am. Anyway, plug in your 8-track tape player and we'll get, get going on. Okay, so that is basically it, kids. Um, if you're in the key of A, okay, you're sitting there... Or you can do You know, just doing that same stuff, that's just embellishing again. And you know that you can do wow, we gotta go all the way up to twelfth fret in order to do do a ninth chord. But so what? That's where it's supposed to be. It's cool. You throw that wah-wah pedal in there. That's where it gets cool. So the wah-wah pedal is a must on your list. You have to have that thing if you're going to be a funk player. Uh, mess with it. Use it. You cannot go wrong with the wah-wah pedal. It is the necessity you have to have other than a guitar, some strings, and an amplifier. That has to be there. Okay? It's just got to be part of your arsenal, and that's the way it is. Okay, um, the other thing is also that we were doing before, but now you're just doing it in A. Okay, the way you do it is you play your D chord, and you find out by using your B string this time, so whatever your ring finger is on, that is your A chord to turn it into a seventh by bringing that A back two whole frets and making a seventh chord out of it. And then you get to start. Same rule applies. You can go back one and go up two, but you have to come back down. Okay, see? So that rule applies to everything. And if you're going to A way up high with the octave things, you grab an A on the G string. So you know that G is here because it starts over again at the 12th fret. Up two frets is your A. Then you'll get your A all the way up here on your 17th fret on your high E string. It's always going to be two frets apart all the time, that octave is whether it's way down here or way up here, it's always going to be uh, your A note, skip two frets, and then skip a string, and then you get your A note again on your E string. Use that meat on the bottom of your finger here to mute that B string. Put your hand, your palm, back here on the, near the bridge again on the low string to help mute it. Then add 
the wah pedal, you're cooler. Okay, so every one of these, if you're throwing the wah pedal in with it, See, it's all much cooler with a wah, so it's just a matter of getting used to doing that. So that is basically that. Those are your tricks as far as all the rhythm stuff goes. Um, you can do things as far as if you know your full bar chord. We'll get you past it one time real quick if you don't. Um, is this. Okay, which I'm going to show it to you in A. You got one finger, your first finger, laying across every single string on your fifth fret every single one. Then you simply build an E chord like you do down here on top of it. So you got your ring finger here at the seventh fret on your A string, your pinky directly under it on the seventh fret on your D string. Now your middle finger is going to go on the sixth fret right there <laughs> on uh, the sixth fret on your G string. Now you have to have all six notes play. is a full bar chord. It's more major sounding, it's not very funk sounding. What is kind of cool is to make a seventh chord out of this. Okay, by doing that, well, all you do is simply pick up your pinky and you're gonna to have to put it on the B string. This is a stretch, but you gotta put it on the eighth fret. You can make it a six which is what else we want to do in a second. But right now the seventh is you're actually putting it up here on the eighth fret. Sounds better with a wah. Okay, so I'm going by this really fast, so go back and get this and learn it. Uh, again, that's the seventh. If you move that pinky back one, so it's actually on the seventh fret now on the B string. This is an A sixth. Why does that sound familiar? Because we're playing A sixth way up here. Now we can actually play it here by simply taking your bar chord, taking your pinky straight down to the seventh fret on the B string. It sounds different, but it still is exactly the same chord and sounds great with a wah. So if you don't want a way up here, or if you just want the option to go back and forth between the two sounds. It sounds kind of cool with that low stuff in there, you know, with the low notes sometimes. I just took that A, or the A7th up a whole octave. Maybe only dogs can hear that. Okay, we've got about 15 minutes left here. Now we're going to learn a little bit in the way of some um, lead guitar stuff for your funk. Okay, this will be very minimal, but it'll be very effective. And these are the most effective things that you can use while you're also using the wah-wah pedal. Again, go get yourself one, kids, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to go back to the key of... Let's see what will be nice and fun and easy. Let's just go back to E again, back to the beginning of the whole video. Um, here is some simple stuff we could do. Um, I'm going to be using this E on the G string all the way up here to the ninth fret as our point of reference, okay? And 
That is basically if you play the three middle strings, the three middle strings I'm talking about are going to be your D string, your G string, and your B string. Just like if you're playing an A chord. But we're doing it all the way up here at the uh, ninth fret. That's what I'm basically looking at for a point of reference or as a guide. But anyway, right now that is what I'm going to be looking at is your middle finger on that note, on the E note. Okay, what I want you to do at this point is take, this is where it gets weird, I want you to take your pinky on the 10th fret of the E string and then your ring finger on the 10th fret of the E string. Okay, it's weird, but what we're actually going to do is now also put, and it makes no sense yet, but you're going to put your first finger on the 8th fret of the B string. You're like, I already know I have a str you know, finger on that same string. What we're doing is using this other finger to help you bend that B string up. It is just strictly there to add strength because your one finger alone isn't going to hardly have enough power by itself to bend. So you're using this other finger, your first finger, to help you with the strength of bending it up. So you can take both fingers and bend that B string up, um, what is called a whole step. So from here to that note. That's how you'll know you have it there. Go up two frets. And then try this. Okay, but you're gonna be leaving that pinky note on your high E string there and hitting both the E string and the B string together. Okay, I know it's weird. Get used to it. <laughs> it's just one of those things, you gotta get used to it. So I'd shut this thing off now and try this for a half hour to get used to it. And you're like, why? Here is, I'll get you uh, excited about it. That's so you can do this stuff, okay? So it's 100% I must. Again, that's what we have to have happen. This middle finger is doing nothing other than flipping people off when you're doing this. <laughs> but you got to get it all the way up there to that note. And get it there every time. You can't bend too far. It just sounds horrible if you don't quite make it enough. It sounds horrible. You got to get and get that drilled in your head for the rest of your life. Again, I'm muting the low strings and I'm just keeping my finger, my hand there on the strings and so nothing else will ring. Then we would do what we call releasing the bend. So while it's all ringing, you let loose of everything and let it all come back down to where it was. Okay, and what we're actually going to do is actually when we're done with that is pull off, which means we're going to pull off this uh, ring finger and you're actually doing this like a pick. You're not going to be using your pick. You're actually taking your finger and kind of picking it like that. So you're pulling it off so hard that you're actually picking it as you let off. Okay. Yeah, had I had my hand over here, I wouldn't have heard that other string. Okay, so that's what we need. Lastly, the note where I told you we were going to be going, the E note. This lets you know you're in the key of E. If I was in the key of G, I'd be right here because I know that's a G chord. So we'd be same thing. You're just straddling the note that you're going for. So we're going for this E note 
you know that these fingers are straddling this and your middle finger is going to hit whatever key you're in. You're in the key of E, so you straddle the key that you're in, that you're finally going to end up on, so you're on both sides of it, then you go right in dead center and hit it. Now if you play back and forth between the two strings, cool effects that way, okay? So there's tons of things to be had here. Again, do not follow me, note for note. Uh, change things up. Then you can do that thing I showed you before. Yes, it's in there, go back and get it. I was not using a pick then. You can do this too. Try to use your fingers, using it, and it gets more funky sounding. Again, with the wah wah. So, this is using those first two, bending up, bending down. I'm doing what's called vibrato, just shaking it back and forth. So. hitting each note this time with the wall up pedal. Okay, you've heard this before. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan was huge on this kind of stuff. That's kind of a blues thing. But in funk, it's cool. Um, most of your funk stuff will be faster. So again, if we're like, you've got all your notes. We're back here again. And the music's playing. Now you're doing this simple stuff like you were before. Now you can do this. Or you can go up higher. Okay. Simply is <laughs> hush. <laughs> As you know that these two notes are octaves, you ended there. So you might as well go ahead and grab that high one you got. Or you can get that note, the octave thing. So you can get that. So now you have slide up to it. So now you see where all this is starting to pull together. Again, here's my band. Okay. Here we go, folks. Yeah, we do all this. thinking you didn't show me a lot of that stuff. I did, but this here's where experimenting has its uh, uh, rewards. Uh, I'm sitting there. That's just doing that. Playing with the wah wah pedal and just doing this to look cool for the audience. And when I was doing the... That's everything that I showed you before. This stuff. Just that. And then from earlier. 
and that's just going backwards. You use just parts of things. Instead of using, just use this and nothing else. That can be just as cool. Now do it an octave higher. I mean, just, it's those notes. There's no more other ones. And use them in every key. Okay? So we're in the key of, let's go to D now. So we're in D. Okay, so now that note is here for the... It's on our G string on the 7th fret. So now you just use the same stuff. The same notes. The same... But now it's all just two frets lower down in the key of D. I'll put our band there. Okay, so now I'm going to play the same stuff. But now in D. Okay, so that's all that was, just mute them all. Okay, I'm going to come down here, I'm all hot and sweaty. <laughs> But I'll come down here where I can find you guys. Anyway, folks, once again, I'm Scott Grove. Uh, hope you've uh, found this very useful. Uh, these are all the basics of funk, you know, you know funk guitar, um, even disco. Yes, I know. But I um, uh, hope you found this so useful. It is so easy laid out this way, and you cannot go wrong with any of these licks. It'll sound like you've been playing all this stuff all your life. So anyway, check out all the other videos I have. They all actually correlate to this also. So um, things that you normally wouldn't think work together, they do, man. Just use the same licks and just uh, experiment, experiment, experiment. Uh, make up your own things, but use what I showed you. All the notes are going to be the same. It's just a matter of what order you put them in or how many of them you play. You know, so it's play three notes of a ten-note thing I showed you, but play it backwards, upside down, inside out whatever it takes to make it your own or whatever it takes to make it fit, whatever you feel. Anyway, once again, I'm Scott Grove. Uh, happy funkin'. <laughs> you guys take care. Bye-bye.